Okay guys, so the first thing we want to do is establish whether our frame is square and true and everything else. And I know for a fact this one isn't, just by looking at it. So it's going to be a prime example to show you guys how to fit into a frame that's out of square. But basically what you want to do first of all is measure down your legs and see if you're parallel right the way down. So I've got 1370, 1372 and 1375 at the bottom. So that tells me that either one or both of these legs is not in level, because otherwise they'd both be the same. Um, I can see my head's higher on here, but the way that we're gonna check that is we're first of all gonna take a nice six foot level, one that we trust, and we're gonna check our legs. So this one's nice and level, if you can see on here. This one over here must be out then, if that's the case. And it is, we're out at the bottom by about five mil, which is good. That, that's what, what we found out by measuring from our top. So we had 1370 and 1375. So that leg is kicking out at the bottom. Then we're gonna take a nice four foot level and just put it across the top here and check for that. And we can see we're out by quite a bit. So we're out by about six mil, give or take, maybe seven mil across that head. So because this side is higher, we wanna start with this side of our door. We don't wanna hang our door onto our lower side, nice and square, because by the time we get back over here, we'll have a massive gap. So we're gonna start with our, our, our higher side, which is good because this leg's actually level as well. So we can square off of this side and then work our way back across. Okay guys, the next thing we need to do is establish the sizing for our doors. So these are the doors that we're gonna be using here, which are 686 millimeters each. Now, two of them to give, together gives us 1,372 millimeters, which is no good for our sizing because we're 1,370. I know we're bigger at the bottom, but we're gonna to work to the top for this first door because um, this jams straight. If it's not, bear with me, I'll tell you what to do in a second. So yeah, 1372 is obviously too big for our opening. Now, if we divide 1370 by two, that gives us 685 millimeters, which is still no good because we need to allow for gaps in our doors. I'm gonna give it six mil overall to start with. So that'll give me a two mil gap here, two mil down the center of the door and two mil over here. We probably will need to adjust that measurement, but with most things, we don't wanna go taking too much off. So we're gonna allow two mil for each, and then if we need to adjust, we can. There will be a painted finish on this, which is gonna take up a little bit of that space as well. Not masses amounts, but we do need to account for that in there when we make our gap. So this middle gap will probably end up being three, three and a half mil, somewhere around there. So then when we put our paint on, it will close that gap up a touch. We don't want massive great big gaps in our doors. So anyway, what we need to do then is work out 1370 minus six, which gives us 1362, and then divide that by two, and that will give us the sizes of our doors for the first one. Now, if you are hanging, as we established earlier, this jam that I'm starting with is nice and parallel, which is good. So that one's level, so we've only got to adjust our head. If you're working on the other side, the other extreme, <clears throat> excuse me, where your, your jam is out of level, what you wanna do is you don't wanna put your door in like this exaggerated. You wanna scribe your door so it's flush, especially with these type of doors with loads of lines in it. Because what will happen is you'll put your door in and everyone will see that this one's doing that and that one's doing that. Now this is really important, especially with these sort of the doors. So what we're gonna have to do is in our case, we can put this one in, that's absolutely fine because this jam is level. This one over here, we're gonna to have to scribe to bring it straight again. And yet again, if your one is out of level, bring that one straight first by cutting more off the top of your door than you are the bottom. Hope that makes sense. Any questions, let me know below and I'll answer them for you. Right, so now we've got that, we need to address the height of our door. Okay, and so to address the height of our door, down here I have got a uh, little threshold strip in there. You guys probably can't see it. I will be replacing that, but I'll replace it for the same thickness. So I'm gonna to work to that. If you're going off a carpeted finish, I would measure your tight tolerance and then allow about five mil just for this initial stage. We don't wanna be going cutting our door down to exact height just yet. 
because if you have got what I've got here and you've got to scribe it, you won't leave yourself enough room for that. So we're gonna take three measurements here and see what we've got. So I've got 1960, in the middle I've got 1957, and over here I've got 1947. So we've got a 10 mil difference in the height across here. I know the threshold on the floor is level, so the top's out, so we need to allow for that. What I'm gonna do is, we wanna get this door in, just barely get it in. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut my door to this height here, and then what we can do is we can scribe our door in to suit to suit that measurement. So yeah, we're gonna take this mid middle measurement, less about two mil, just so we can get our door in, and then we can scribe it to suit, and I'll show you how to do that in a second. Let's do it. Okay guys, so we've now got our door in, but as you can see, our gap's massive over here, and we've got a reasonably okay gap there, but it's still a bit bigger than we'd like. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna jack the door up with one of these. I used to use um, wind bags, but I found they'd go down. These are on Amazon. I've been using these quite a lot, and they seem to be quite good. They're about six quid for two. Um, have a look on Amazon. I won't put a link on there, because I don't do affiliate marketing, so. Yeah, have a little look on Amazon for them, or just put in pump wedge in Amazon, and you'll find them, but these are gonna be your best friend. But anyway, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop this under the door, we're gonna jack the door up as high as we can possibly get it, so it's tight, so it'll be touching here, and then we're gonna measure the gap here, and then transfer that mark here. But don't worry, I'm gonna show you how I do that now, so let's get this pumped up, and then we'll move over. Okay guys, so like I said, the gap here is obviously bigger than the gap here. So this is what we want to get, the same gap right away across here. So to do that, I use a metal ruler because I find it easier. And I measure the gap, so we've got five mil there. And then I'll transfer that mark to here. Five mil. So it's not a massive amount, but it looks like a massive amount over this. So now we need to cut from that mark there to nothing and then that should scribe our door into suit okay guys so that's our head all scribed what we want to do now is mark our hinge positions get them to cut in and then that's this door actually done so for that what i'm going to do is i'm going to put a three mil packer at the top of the door use anything that you can find that's three mil it doesn't have to be bang on three mil i just like using three mil some people go with two mil um, so all we're going to do is pop that in the top of the door, around about the middle-ish, yet again, doesn't need to be an exact science, and using our windbag on the floor, we'll pump that door up and that'll give us a nice consistent 3mm gap at the top of the door, allowing us to mark our hinges in the right position. So let's do that. Okay guys, so it's now time to put our hinges in. Now I'm going to be using one of my homemade hinge jigs, um, if you guys don't have a hinge jig of any type, have a look up in the corner up here, or this one, I can't remember what size it is, and I've done a tutorial of how to do one with a router and how to chop hinges in by hand. So both videos will be up in the top. If they're not up there for whatever reason, if I forgot to do it, just search back in the channel. But basically what we're gonna do is square our lines across, get our little hinge jig positioned where we want it, clamp that on, and then route them out. But again, if you haven't got a hinge jig, just watch them videos at the top and it'll show you exactly how to do it. Okay guys, so we're happy with that. That's our first door in place. We've got our second door here. And what we need to do now is establish and get this door straight and in the right plane. So what we need to do is measure the bottom and measure the top and see what our difference is. If your door lining is correct and the way it should be, you shouldn't have a gap there. 
but we know on my door line in here, this legs out by five mil, five-ish mil. So what I've done is I've measured the bottom and I've got 691 millimeters there. That gives us a five mil difference between our door size and that, which is okay. I was shooting for a four mil difference. We got a five mil difference, so we're okay with that. So 686 plus five gives us 691. So that's fine, we can go with that, because like I said, after painting that, it's gonna take up a little bit of that gap. At the top here, we have got 686 bang on. So we've got a five mil difference between the bottom of our door opening and the top. So what I now need to do is transfer, tra <laughs> is transfer that difference onto our doors itself. So making sure our door's in the right orientation, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a mark up here at five mil and then cut a straight line from nothing down at the bottom to five mil on here. And then we're gonna do the same process again of how we swung this door. So we're gonna cut our door to the tight height, get it leveled up, but there is something we need to pay attention to. So don't skip ahead just yet. I'm gonna get our door in and then I'll show you what we really need to pay attention to to get these doors looking pucker. So don't disappear yet. Okay guys, so here you can see we've got our pair of doors in. Gap down the middle is looking good. That is gonna be taken up a little bit more by the hinge anyway, so that's gonna close up. So we might have to shave a little bit off of that. Shouldn't have to, but you know, these things do have to. So we still need to scrape the head of our door, but the other important thing we need to do is, can you see that the top rail of this door and the top rail of this door aren't in line? And now that's gonna look terrible. If we don't get them at the same height, it's gonna look really bad. So what I wanna do is take my spirit level, and put that across this door here, our fixed position door, straight across, and then just mark that point across. So now we've got that mark there, we're gonna do the same scribing process that we did on this door, but with this. So we're gonna measure that distance there, and we've got five mil. Now we're gonna measure down five mil, but then we also need to allow our relief in there. So we're gonna do eight mil, measured down and eight mil measured down. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna take our door up by five mil, leaving a three mil gap in there, the same as we've got here, if that makes sense. So <clears throat> I'm gonna do that now. We'll cut that head of that door and then it's just repeating the same process of hinging that and then we'll check our gap at the end. And that's the important thing. And I will show you at the end how to scribe the bottom of the doors to make sure they're sitting in line. So let's do that. And there we have it guys, that's our doors all in nice and lovely. We've got a nice gap down the middle here, which is a mil bigger than we need it at the moment. But like I said, paint is gonna take up that gap. We've got a decent gap at the top that's consistent right the way through. Our head is lining through nicely on both doors, so that's good. Um, I did have to throw the hinge down at the bottom here. If you don't know what that means, it means basically I've had to pull this bottom corner out here to make sure our doors are on the same plane. In an ideal world, we would have a perfect door lining, but we haven't got that in this scenario. So doing that looks a lot better than having two twisted doors. Like I say, the right thing to do technically would be take this door lining out and put a new one in, but real world scenario here, no customer's gonna want you to do that, you know, not for the sake of just throwing a hinge down the bottom there. So we're happy with that. Um, all we've got to do now, which is gonna, I'm not gonna do on film because I've done loads of videos on how to do latches and hang doors and bits and pieces, but I'm gonna put two roller ball catches at the top here and a pair of handles on there. You could put a shoot bolt on the inside of one of them and make one a lead door and one a slave door um, and then put a normal latch on it. But like I said, in this instance, I'm gonna have two roller ball catches. Now, the next video is gonna be me doing the inside of this cupboard, and what it's gonna be turned into is a little office space within these cupboards. So if you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button to check that video out. In fact, if you could just hit that subscribe button for me anyway, because we're really trying to get to 30,000 subs, um, and we're so close, we're so close. So yeah, hit that subscribe button for me. If you guys could do me a massive favor, if you could write the word pear in the comments, but P-A-I-R, not pear as in the fruit, we're, we're out of the fruit bowl now. Um, P-A-I-R in the comments for me, it just lets me know who's got this far in the video. 
and uh, lets me know which one of you guys are like actually supporting the channel properly. <laughs> so that would be great. If you've got any questions on anything I've done here or if I haven't explained something properly, hit me down in the comments and I'll get back to you to explain them things to you. But yeah, I'm going to leave it there, guys. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button, ding that bell. You'll be up to date with all my videos. Hit the like button if you've got anything from this, even if you don't hit the dislike one, either or. And uh, I'll see you on the next one, guys. Thanks for watching. Cheers.